Over the years, our families had a share of health problems. So prescriptions are a part of our life. Before we went to the big box store. We both thought it would help us save. But with the long lines and impersonal service, filling prescriptions became a chore. That's when a friend recommended DNH. Now Tristan knows our prescriptions. Brenda always helps us find the right vitamins. And after Dad's fall, Monica's been a real expert with all our home medical needs, all without the lines. Trust and service. That's our DNH. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, January the 8th. We've got a couple of really interesting special guests today. Before I introduce them to you, I, I want to tell you just a, a little bit of the history. In fact, our, our first guest um, is from Nepal. When he was about 14 or 15 years old, both of his parents were killed in a mudslide in Nepal. He became an orphan. He had no family or friends, no place to live or go. He lived in the streets, eating out of garbage cans, uh, starving and freezing. Then a doctor from the United States was in Nepal to climb Mount Everest, and he met our guest. At that point, I guess there was some connection because he ended up adopting this young boy. Uh, and he is with us today. He, not the young 15-year-old boy anymore. <laughs> he's uh, somewhere in his 40s and he's got a son here. But I want to introduce you to Dr. Devi States. Good to have you here, Dr. Devi Thank States. Thank you. And, you. and your son, Jesse. It's hey, a pleasure to have you, you, Jesse. Too. Now, the story that I told at the beginning happened to you when you were... 14 or 15 years old. I'm 15 years old. But, but you don't know exactly your age because the village you were born in had no medical records. No, you, what's the forget? You, don't, yeah. you didn't know your age, you didn't know when you were no. born, the day or the date of your birth. Yeah, we estimated around 15, okay. 14. But you met uh, Dr. States who was there to climb Mount Everest and he adopted you. That's correct. And took you back to the United States. Yes. Now you're living a good life. You're, you had a dream. Your dream was to open a restaurant and also to build a hospital in your home country of Nepal. That's correct. And you're doing both yes. right now. Yes. After being homeless in Kathmandu, uh, after a year and a half, then I finally found a job at a restaurant. So you were homeless for a year and a half? Yeah, then I finally found a job at a restaurant to wash dishes and washing table. Then I had two dreams. One dream, although I'm poor, someday I want to own my own restaurant. Okay. Second dream, I want to do something to help children and women who are poor and suffer as I was. Yeah. So while, while I was working at a restaurant, I met an American father who climbed Everest, Dr. James Stace. He came back multiple times to eat. And one day he asked me, Debbie, you're so small. Why are you working here? I told him that I have no choice. And he asked me again, what I want to do and grow up? And I told him about my two dreams. And, and I told him, about, I don't know how realistic, but I have two dreams. I told him that. And he said, well, I'm a doctor. I went to medical school to help people, not to be rich. I want to, I want to help you. I want to take you yes. So, so it's he, okay. He so said here. he went to medical school to help people, not to get yes, rich. Correct. What a wonderful, what yeah. a wonderful uh, attitude that he had. Yes. So he he adopted you. you. You're his son. Yes. He he brought you back to the United States, and you were able to realize that dream of opening a restaurant, owning a restaurant. Yes. And now you are trying to raise as much money as you can to help build a hospital Probably in the hospital in Nepal. Yes. And your son, Jesse, who is, <laughs> it, good to have you here, Jesse. You're the age your father was when he went through that. So it's a little different. Yeah, right it's now, like an exact it? flip. So how is a fundraising coming along for the hospital? Um, we're still looking into it. We have like a lot of potential donors and funders. Um, but right now we're still an infant, considering uh, that we're still started about, what, 10 years ago, that's when we first started. We started right. off like just giving $10 a month. But you, but you go back and there, there there is a facility there now for people, right? We have the land 
But again, our goal is to build a permanent hospital. Healthcare to facility. build a permanent hospital. Yes. Uh, but we've got but, some we've got some pictures. And I'd like to share them with you now. To see the pictures, obviously, if you're listening on the radio, you got to go to kbia.org, to the website, and click on Radio Friends. And this is the operating room of one of the makeshift uh, hospitals? This is a, a school a classroom, school? actually. This is a school classroom? Uh, yes. But are you doing surgery there? Right, there's our volunteers, medical volunteers. Hmm. Okay, and they're doing surgery Correct. in a school classroom. Yes. Now you want to make this a permanent, you want to have a permanent hospital. Then the next picture we have are some of the kids. Street children. Yeah. That inspired me because I used to be homeless. Right, and those are two homeless kids. Yes, yes. And here is another homeless child. When you look at these, oh, and, and this picture is what? They're waiting for the health camp to see a provider. So they're behind the gates right now waiting for the health camp. Health camp, yes. yes. How, uh, to see a provider. Right. When you see pictures like this, your heart goes out to people. When we see what we have here and you realize how, many, how so many people around the world are living. And then this last picture we have, this is the road to your town. Correct. That's why we're trying to do the hospital. Yeah, yeah, you're listening on the radio, and it you got to take a look at this because this road we're talking about is nothing more than a very thin path on the side of a mountain, and that goes to the town. If people want to help out, what can they do, doctor? Basically, uh, visit us at our website. Uh, it's called www.himalanfamily. Healthcareproject.org. Okay, it, it is. Give it to me again. Oh, www.himalayanfamilyhealthcareproject.org. Let me repeat that uh, that website for you. It is www.himalayanfamilyhealthcare.org. And this is a 501 a C3 charitable organization. Or if you want more information, you can call 314-531-4800. And uh, they can come down to your restaurant also in Jefferson City, Sure, right? yes. Yeah, every restaurant in Jefferson City. One, one in Jefferson City, one in St. Louis. Oh, yeah, one in Jeff City and one in St. Louis. Yeah. And you're doing all this work trying to pay back what uh, someone did for you. Correct. That's okay. especially important for me. Before I die, I want to do something for other people. And that's very important. That's wonderful. That's yes. wonderful. I, I, I can only imagine how it feels when you think back over those years and you met this wonderful doctor who took you under his wing, and now you're able to pay back. And that was his request to you also, was to give back to the community yes. also. Yes. Okay. Debbie, thank you so much for coming thank by. Thank Jesse, thank you. Thank thank you. Thank Continued you. success, and I hope you raise a lot of money there. <laughs> We're out of time for today, tomorrow, the Rainbow House is our topic. Our program directed by Travis McMillan of the Reynolds Journalism, Journalism Institute. All right, our uh, audio is Pat Akers, our floor director is Lowell Thomas, and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mouser. Watch this segment and see the pictures. KBIA.org. Click on uh, Radio Friend. Bye-bye.